Hey, it's Minnie Nate Raven, and today we're going to be ranking women's fashion from the 1930s. So, if you've been to my channel before, you'll know I love fashion, I love wearing fashion, and fashion has changed a lot over the years. And today we're going to take a gander at 1930s fashion, and we're going to see what fashion we would wear nowadays, what stuff would have been a bit more, mm, and what stuff we think maybe will come back in fashion one day. So if you beg to differ on any of these rankings, comment down below your favourite clothes from the 1930s, whether you think fashion trends are hit and miss, um, and let me know your comments. So today we're going to do a tier system. As you can see, we have four different categories. We have trendy, wearable, old-fashioned, or unwearable. So we're ranking them basically from what I would personally like to have worn, to stuff that maybe was a bit more hit and miss. So share your comments down below and let's get into the video. So the first item we are looking at are day gloves. So day gloves were a big thing that then women used to keep their hands prim and proper. And it was basically, um, as they say, a glove that fits every hand. It was made of butter soft leather that molded perfectly to your hand. These were custom made. They would feature side vents, a rubber sole, a cushioned sole. They were made to tailor your hands. Now, back in the 1930s, highly respected women wore gloves. It was so you didn't leave fingerprints on stuff like when you were out shopping. And you'd see women carrying their handbags and then in their hands, they would have their gloves and then they would put them on as they went outside. Um, to keep their hands pristine because back then keeping your hands pristine was a big thing so I don't wear gloves very often I'm more of a, a hat person as you can see but back in the day in the 1930s pre-war fashion wasn't massive until like after the war you get to like 1940s 1950s so we're going to put the wear gloves in wearable because though I don't wear gloves, I do find in the winter I stick the old gloves on. Um, but in the back in the day, gloves were worn all the time, sort of day in, day out. Um, and you used to get day gloves and you get evening gloves, which is another entirely different thing. So in the next item, we're going to look at our Art Deco earrings. So I don't have my ears pissed. Um, and I never have wanted to, but back in the day, accessories were a big thing. Um, Art Deco jewelry used a lot of um, synthetic stones, diamonds. They were made out of platinum, white gold. It was an era to show off your creative and artistic flares. The jewelry was always very ornate, um, very custom made art deco pieces um like i said again it would be high society people so for me i would put these in unwearable because i personally cannot wear earrings i don't have my ears pierced i don't intend to have them pierced so for me it's an unwearable fashion i don't see the necessity of having to pierce a hole in you to wear an item of, of fashion but that's my personal preference um, everyone will probably differ out there with their ears pierced, their nose pierced, but back then it wouldn't have been a thing that people just regularly did um, to get something pierced. Um, next, we're looking at the bias cut dress. So this is a dress that defines your outline, your silhouette. Um, it's made by simple pieces of fabric that are on a cross grain rather than the straight grain of normal um, warped fabric. So by the 1930s, Hollywood designers were using this to feature their top actresses in. It became a celebrity staple of wearing a bias cut gown uh, to an event, on a catwalk, or even at an award ceremony. Um, they basically shape the woman so they come to this like hourglass slim line, not showing all your curves, but just enough. Um, no, I'm not a big fan of wearing dresses. Haven't worn that many dresses over the years, but it is a gorgeous fashion if you can actually rock the fashion. So bias cut dresses, I think they're a thing maybe, um, for me, they're kind of old fashioned. I think there are better silhouettes nowadays that maybe 
a more form fitting. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. Everyone's going to beg to differ, probably. But, you know, um, my fashion is my fashion. So next we have the polka dot craze of the 1930s. So polka dots became a thing. They basically took a classic dress and infused it with beautiful spots all over it, which became known as the polka dot dress. So these dresses were a classic through the 1930s, worn at many a tea dance, worn at many a sailor's do. Um, they generally tended to be two different colours. You'd get one colour of dress and then you'd get the polka dots of a different colour. Um, usually it would be black and white or white and black, but then they did do colours. Um, like I said, again, not the big fan of dresses, but polka dots, um, they're not too bad. Um, I would put it in the wearable fashion. Um, polka dots have always kind of been around. Um, and they all come and go in fashion. Polka dots is in one year and then it's out the next. So the next fashion we're looking at is the thick heeled shoe. So I'm going to show you a picture in a second. But thick heel shoes are a type of shoe that is significantly high off the ground compared to the toes. So the heel is elevated compared to the shoe. Um, they were usually around 3.5 centimetres or as much as 18 centimetres or more in the case of a ballet boot. So what I mean by that is the shoe here, this is the, hang on, which one is it? It's this one here. The shoe itself had a heel, if I just, uh, let me put it on the board. So I'm going to put these in old fashioned but basically the high part of the heel up here was higher than the toe by like an immense amount and they were basically called thick heel shoes and the idea was the higher the heel tilted the more it would make you um stand more upright because you'd be leaning so then you'd end up standing like um tall and the idea was to make it so that women didn't slouch by having them stand up to a certain um, angle. I know, getting women to stand a certain way, um, yeah. So basically it made you arch. Um, so you get the heel and it would make you stand up and it would arch your back so that you would stand more taller. It's, it's, a, it's an ingenious way to get a woman to sit up a little bit taller. So then after you get the thick heeled, you had the two-tone shoe colour. So these were basically shoes that were basically the same as a thick heel, but they were two different patterned levers. So you'd have one patterned lever that would feature on two parts of the shoe, and then you'd have pattern lever on the other two. Or as in the shoes that you can see that are already on the chart, you'd have different patterned leather and it would be like multi-toned. So these shoes became fashionable to make shoes that back in the days in the 1910s and 1920s were kind of plain. And if you wanted a pop of colour to go with your accessories or something, you would have your shoes, as you can see on here, two-toned. Um, so two-toned shoes. I think they're wearable. I think nowadays you get things like black and white trainers or high heels that are multicolor, different strap to, to the rest of the shoe. Um, my trainers are black and white. They're two-toned. Um, even my trainers are two-toned. So two-toned is still a thing used today in fashion. Um, if you look along the catwalks, you will find multi-layered clothing is all in different colors. Next, we've got a fashion that came along with the war, and these are the high-waisted sailor pants. These are basically sailor trousers that have wide, high-waisted, they're basically like high-waisted jeans, um, but they're not cropped, they're not flared, they're more kind of straight-legged. Um, and these became fashionable due to the war, obviously. They had the sailor stripes on them. They were usually made of really soft fabric kind of billowing fabric if you want to call it and they became a heyday during the war and after the war and a lot of people still wear sailor high pants nowadays so i would say the sailor pants are trendy i love a nice straight legged pair of trousers they're kind of like what i always wear obviously these aren't kind of billowing fabrics but i like the whole silhouette of the straight up and down next 
in line we have is the cloche hat so it's pronounced cloche and this is a hat that was simply a bell fitted shaped hat for women was invented in 1908 but really took off again during wartime and its name is derived from the french word cloche which means bell so basically it was kind of similar to what i would call a bucket hat um, it basically form fitted the head that way it would keep your ears warm it would keep your hair in place um, Sometimes it would have a bow on the side of it or a flower and it'd be accented with maybe a ribbon that would go around the top um, Kind of like the one in here. So I still think the cloche is trendy. I still think um, I would personally wear one if I had one I see them at car boot sales and yard sales all the time um, obviously, I wear a trilby hat, but cloches and trilby, even a trilby was fashionable in the 1930s. Um, next, we are looking at fur coats. So, going from the gangsters of the 1920s and the speakeasies, women started to wear more elaborate clothes. So, you had the bias cut dresses, and so came the fur coats. So, because they were wearing lighter, flurrier fabrics, they then needed a fur coat to keep them warm. So the fur coats would range from wearing minks and fake furs um, and they would be bulky and heavy and fluffy and they'd have a collar that would go round. Sometimes you would get lined ones if you could afford it um, and they'd come in a number of varieties of colours and styles and they became a big thing in the 1930s. Celebrities, actresses and all that wore it. But nowadays, the fur coat is kind of an old thing. You don't see people on the catwalks rocking fur coats. You don't see celebrities going around with these fur coats at the Grammys or anything like that. I think they're kind of, it's an old fashion, but it's not unwearable anymore. So the next item we're looking at in this montage of 1930s fashion is the Oxford shoe. So the Oxford shoe is a classic shoelace eyelet tabbed shoe. Um, usually um, they're a contrast to a derby's shoe. Um, they have eyelets that attach to the top of the vamp. So these are, they're a classic shoe, kind of like a brogue. They're kind of like a loafer. They're more of a like a working girl shoe, if you want to call it. Obviously, during the war, being on your feet all the time, so these kind of shoes were hard wearing, and you could wear these day in, day out. They didn't have a very high heel. They were kind of slumped heels, kind of minimal heels. So if you were on your feet all day in the army, working um, in the offices and stuff like that, you'd have had comfy feet. So we're going to put the Oxford shoe in the old-fashioned i think they're old-fashioned now um not a lot of people wear oxford shoes anymore um kind of nowadays people wear more like high fashion shoes and these are kind of dated but they are still wearable they're just old-fashioned next we've got cat sleeves oh the good old days of a cat sleeve so basically a cap sleeve is a specific style of short sleeved top that basically they're cut at the seam and they taper to your underarm. The style is usually not too loose and creates like a covering over your shoulder. Um, back in, I mean, the cap sleeve also came sort of back in the 80s when they bought the puffer sleeve, which was just then a bigger sleeve compared to a cap sleeve that kind of ballooned the cap sleeve into a bigger one. I am not a fan of a cap sleeve. I would put them in unwearable. Sometimes you get like a bow on the front, but the cap sleeves I always thought were kind of restricting. Um, I mean, tops like this are all right, but um, the cap sleeves are more form fitting to you, so they end up being a lot tighter. Um, they were kind of what receptionists wore back in the 1930s or the girls in the call centers and that um, during the war. Um, now we're looking at slender tubes. <laughs> you don't know what slender tubes is, prefer for a whirlwind adventure here. These were high fashionable underwear of the day. 
They were shaped tubes, which basically were to style your figure. Um, they were loosely kind of made out of like parachute fabric back then, I believe. Um, they had no waste indentations or anything. They were basically boned with a piece of fabric and they were designed to form fitting you. Over the 1930s, though, they did start to become more shapely. Um, they'd show off a lot more flesh. Originally, they were just like a piece of fabric that went from top to your bottom and just covered everything. And then they started doing like two pieces where they'd cut it in half so that you weren't completely restricted, like like fenced in. So I think they're unwearable. I don't know anyone that wears slender tubes. Nowadays, you have what we call shapewear. So it's like more form fitting stuff, but they don't all have like boning in them, although you can get bone shapewear. Back then, the boning was more to get the woman to look thinner. And nowadays, we have the fabrics, the, the, the technology to make clothes look slimmer without having to put all the boning and anything in. But boning is still used. Um, and people do still wear shapewear and spanks and all that kind of thing to get a slimmer figure. But nowadays, you can do amazing things with fabrics to create the illusion of, of being slimmer without actually being slimmer. And then the last item is the striped knit blouse. So blouses were big in the 1930s. Stripes were big because obviously the war, the nautical theme came in and obviously like i said the polka dots came in so the striped nautical kind of flared top look whether it's a frilly top whether it was a plain top the striped look came in and that was um whether it was a jumper or a top and then obviously the sailors outfits ended up being a striped um blue and white so it had like a nautical theme now nautical themes go back and forward. Sometimes they're in fashion, sometimes they're not in fashion. Nautical is one of those things where it's hit and miss throughout the years. So we're gonna put stripes in wearable because although it is an old fashion from the nautical kind of wartime, people still do wear nauticals the same as they still do wear camo nowadays. Um, you don't necessarily have to be in a war to appreciate fashion. So this was my list. What do you think? Let's take a closer look. So here we have the list for me. So in the trendy, we have the cloche hat and the sailor pants. In the wearable, we have the day gloves, the polka dot dress, the two-tone shoes, and the striped top. In the old fashion, we have the bias cut dresses, we have the thick heel shoes, we have the fur collar coat, and we have the Oxford shoe. And then in the unwearable, which is only my personal preference, are the Art Deco earrings, the cat sleeve shirt or blouse, and the slender tubes, which is what they were called back then, lingerie kind of shapewear. And that is what I believe is the fashion trends of the 1930s so if you'd like to see more of these please do give me a big thumbs up if you want to see me do fashion trends in the 1940s 50s 60s 70s or 80s comment down below if you want to see that video if you want to see more of my tier lists i will link the playlist up here or down below comment down below do you like fashion from the 1930s what was your favorite fashion decade that i need to do a tier list on would you like me to do a men's 1930s tier list? If you want to see more, you can always go on my Instagram. I am the underscore midnight underscore raven. Or if you want to see more of me, I do load videos every day here on YouTube. So please feel free to subscribe. Click the notification bell so you don't miss another video. And I will see you all very soon for another tier list very soon. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye.